People always say you need to preheat your oven for at least 30 minutes when you're baking sourdough bread. Today I'm going to find out if that's just straight up a lie. I'm going to be baking this loaf of sourdough bread in a cold oven. I'm going to put it into my Dutch oven, pop it right into my cold oven, and then turn the oven on. I'm going to bake it up until it's fully cooked and see what it looks like when it comes out. And then I'm gonna be comparing that with this loaf of bread that I'm gonna bake according to just my standard procedure. I'm gonna preheat the oven, pop it in the hot Dutch oven, and bake it like I normally do. I'm gonna compare the two loaves and see how they compare, basically. Both of these loaves follow my standard sourdough bread recipe. It's just a straight white dough, 450 grams of bread flour, 300 grams of water, 100 grams of starter, 10 grams of salt. That's a 70% hydration dough. These have been cold proofing in the fridge overnight for about 18 hours actually. Exactly the same dough, I'm just gonna be baking them a little bit differently. Okay, this is going to be the loaf that I bake in the cold Dutch oven and in the cold oven. So I'm just going to score it like I normally do using the Arklam from Wire Monkey Shop, if you're curious. Okay, I scored it with just a long, simple slash like I normally do. That's the same thing I'm gonna be doing with the other loaf. Let's pop this into a cold oven and see what happens. I am making sure to use some parchment paper on the bottom of the loaf. I'm gonna do that for both, especially with a cold Dutch oven. I don't want anything to stick on the bottom. I'm afraid that that is gonna be a risk factor. It's gonna be very likely to stick to the Dutch oven since there's not high heat cooking it right away. So make sure to use parchment paper if you give this a try yourself. Move this to the Dutch oven. Okay, just transfer this to the Dutch oven. I'm gonna pop the lid on. Everything is cold. The oven is cold. The Dutch oven is cold. I normally bake my loaves for 20 minutes with the lid on, then 15 minutes with the lid off. So for this loaf, I'm gonna give it 50 minutes with the lid on. And I'm gonna set my oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Pop the loaf in, put the Dutch oven lid on, and then now I just started preheating my oven. So let's see what happens in 50 minutes. While the other loaf is baking, I'm gonna move this one back into the fridge just so it doesn't warm up too much. We want it to be as close of an even comparison as we can. So that's gonna stay in the fridge until I bake it. Okay, it's been over 20 minutes of baking. I've got 27 minutes left on the timer. I'm just now coming up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll see how this works out. It's been 50 minutes. Normally after 20 minutes baking in a hot oven, I've got good oven spring on the loaf. I've got a nice ear on the loaf. So let's see if I've got anything close to that baking from a cold oven start. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good. There's an ear on the loaf. I've got good oven spring. It's already browning really well after 50 minutes. So I'm just gonna leave this in here for about, I'd say five more minutes uh, to get some more color on the loaf and then I'll call that good. Okay, it's been another five minutes. I'm gonna take this loaf out. and just let it cool down on the counter while I bake the other loaf. I'd say this loaf is a little bit wider, maybe a little bit more stout than my normal loaves, but the only way to compare it is to actually compare it side by side to the other loaf. So I'm gonna bake that now. This should be hot still, but I'm gonna put it all back in the oven and let it continue heating for just about five more minutes while I score the loaf. I'm gonna treat this loaf exactly like the first one except I'm gonna bake it in a hot oven. Move this to the Dutch oven. Now I'm gonna bake this for 20 minutes in the hot oven with the lid on. And once I take the lid off, we'll see if there's any big difference in oven spring. Okay, upon taking the lid off, I don't really notice any big difference in oven spring. It's pretty much the same loaf, maybe a little bit smoother on top. I'm gonna give this loaf 15 more minutes in the oven to get some nice color, and here it is. Okay, here are the two loaves, the one I baked starting in the cold oven on the left and the one I baked in the preheated and hot Dutch oven on the right. I'm gonna let these cool down and do a little comparison. 
So a lot of people say that if you don't have a hot baking surface, like I do with the loaf on the right, that you won't have good oven spring. But this loaf on the left, it was baked on a cold surface and it slowly got warmer throughout the baking time and it still has good oven spring. So that shows us that oven spring is really more of a function of the dough and the fermentation itself rather than just the baking surface. Although I think the top of this loaf looks a little bit wilder. Like the one on the right is a lot smoother. It's like it busted open in more of a predictable manner. Whereas the one baked in the cold oven on the left is just got a lot more going on up there. It's like it ripped apart. So that might have been because of the temperature it was baked at. I'm not sure. They do just look a little bit different on top. So that's kind of the only difference I can see on the outside of the two loaves. I will show you the inside in a minute, but I want to look at some of these blisters. I've got pretty much the same blisters on this loaf on the left that was baked in the cold oven as the one on the right. I have some fermentation blisters on that crust. But the one on the right's a lot more crackly. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the baking temperature, uh, but the crust cracked a little bit more on that one. Now for the crumb shot, the inside of the loaf that everyone always wants to see. Here is the loaf that I baked starting in a cold oven, in a cold Dutch oven. It's got a nice, pretty closed crumb. It's a 70% hydration dough. This is usually pretty much what my loaves look like. And then here's the one I baked in a preheated oven like I normally do. The crumb is pretty much the same as the first one. I don't really think there are any big differences that can be attributed to the baking method. Here again is the crumb of the one that I baked starting in a cold oven. And here's the one that I baked starting in a preheated oven. It's pretty much the same loaf, honestly. So one thing that I wanted to be upfront about in this experiment is that I burned the bottom of both of these loaves. Since it happened to both of the loaves, I'm pretty sure it just had to do with me putting the Dutch oven too close to the heating element at the bottom of the oven. It had nothing to do with either of the two baking methods. When I bake with my Dutch oven, I usually have a pizza steel underneath as a barrier, which keeps the bottom from burning, and I forgot to do that this time. So that's what happened there, but now let's talk about one of the reasons you might want to use the cold oven start method. You do actually save a little bit of total baking time. The total time that your oven is actually on is only 55 minutes for this method, whereas with my regular method where I preheat the oven, it took me a total of 65 minutes. So you do save about 10 minutes of total time that your oven is on, so I guess that saves a little bit of energy. Honestly, that's not enough to convince me to start using the cold oven start method full time. It doesn't really save that much time, and I just like the results I get from preheating my oven. But it is cool to know that you don't actually have to have a preheated oven and a hot baking surface to get good oven spring or even just good sourdough bread. If you have good dough and good fermentation, you're gonna get good sourdough bread, whether you preheat your oven or not. If you wanna give this cold oven start method a try, go ahead and use the same recipe I used for the dough in this video. This is my master sourdough bread recipe, and the video is right here.